50% of people in leadership positions are not adding value at all. Now imagine if that is done in Sri Lanka. If you are adding value to enough people or if you are helping enough people succeed in what they want to achieve, you never have to worry about whether you will succeed or not. Because if you add in value, we don't have to, have to be scared, right? So what this shows is, there are six different leadership styles which I will teach you. That's a dangerous style to adopt unless everyone in the team is highly super powerful. Have you heard of Daniel Goldman? He's the guy who popularized this term called emotional intelligence. So his research shows a strong positive correlation to financial results when the organization has these aspects in their climate. He shows that about one third of the results are coming because of these aspects of climate. One third, 33% or so, is coming because of these things in the climate. Flexibility to renovate, talk about bureaucracy, people are taking responsibility, people are taking, putting their hands up when they make a mistake, they are accountable for things. That's Richard Boyasis, professor at uh, Case Western Reserve University. So startling results. Right? His research shows 50% of people in leadership positions are not adding value at all. 50% of people in leadership positions are not adding value at all. This is a study done in the States. Now imagine if that is done in Sri Lanka. Would it be better or worse? <laughs> worse. Because why? Not that we have better, worse people than the States. In the States, it's a higher and fire culture. Even in a higher and fire culture, you know what higher and fire is. If you don't perform, you come the next day to work, you have a pink slip on your desk and you say, go home. That's it. No labor tribunal, no nothing. You're out. Even in that culture, if 50% are not adding value, in our culture, where everybody is secure in their jobs, because you can't fire them, <laughs> I think that is going to be significantly higher. 20 to 30 percent are adding value in one person's point of view. <laughs> one person thinks they are good. And 70 to 80 percent can be removed and the organization will function better. 80 percent can be removed and the organization will be better. So I was listening to this audiobook. So I, I read a lot, but I listen to audiobooks when I'm walking or jogging or whatever or driving. And I think I find that's a great use of my time. It's, it was a book by a guy called Zig Ziglar. Have you heard of Zig Ziglar? It says, and motivation and all this. So, Zig Ziglar was the, like the top guy before Tony Robbins. If you heard of Tony Robbins, Zig Ziglar, very, very similar. So, what one thing this guy said was, if you are adding value to enough people, or if you are helping enough people succeed in what they want to achieve, you never have to worry about whether you will succeed or not. If you are helping enough of people to achieve their goals and succeed, you never have to worry about you succeed. I think that's absolutely true, isn't it? Because if you add in value, we don't have to, have to be scared. I changed careers, not jobs. Changed careers about four times in my life so far. <laughs> and radical changes. And it hasn't been very bad. <laughs> so as long as you know you add in value and you have high self-esteem, high self-confidence built on a solid foundation, you can do anything, <coughs> anywhere, in any circumstance. Don't ever be scared. Sometimes we are scared, right? Thinking this country, what's going happening, blah, 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 right? No. I always tell people, Sri Lankans are not the 225s. Sri Lanka is us. We are Sri Lanka. So if we all turn things around, the country will turn around. Yes, there are policies and all of that. But you find a way. This is the study and this is the aspects of culture and these are different leadership styles so what this shows is there are six different leadership styles which i will teach you which we will go through some of the leadership styles have a strong positive correlation to building a better culture and a better climate so strong positive is authoritative affiliative democratic and coaching strongly negative is coercive and paste it and out of the strongly positive the strongest is authoritative so what they're trying to say is the more we use the styles which are in black there, the better. Yes, the less we use the styles in red, the better. Not to say the styles in red should never be used. They have their time and their place. But caution, don't use too much of them. It could be a negative impact. What are these styles? Coercive is immediate compliance. Do this now. Why? I don't have to tell you why. You just do it because I'm telling you to do it. So it's do what I tell you. Monkey and a day, karna. I was, nah. Karna. Deng. Duono. 
So that is the dictatorial style. So it's strongly negative, but it does have its place. For some people who are problem employees, you have to use this with them. If you don't, they will not do anything at all. <laughs> but you have to think now. And you have to look inwards at yourself. Because I can't do that. You have to think for yourself. If your main style is that, then I think there is a problem. If everything is you get done by that, do it because I'm telling you, then that's purely coercive. People don't like that for a long time. Imagine you won't like that for a long time. No? If you're every day told exactly what to do, not given any freedom, just sit there, do this, do this, because I'm telling you, I'm not going to like it. So that's cause. Authoritative is not do what I tell you, but come with me. See, we have a beautiful vision there. See, we can help 20,000 people next year save their lives. Remember my story? We have a compelling vision. So the authoritative style is we create a clear direction. We create a clear vision. And now people want to go to that vision. So you say, now, come with me. Let's go together. Let me show you how. The difference is coercive, there is no vision. Do this, do this, because I'm telling you, do it. <coughs> Authoritative, it starts with a vision. This is what we are trying to do. And the vision itself is actually inspiring people, right? You know why we won the 1996 World Cup? There was a very compelling vision, yeah? Which was, we are not going to, as a team, we are not going to tolerate this nonsense. We have great unity. We have one vision. We have a single purpose. And what was the single purpose? To prove all those idiots wrong, that Sri Lanka was a great team. Because Murali was betting, called on no ball over and over and over in Australia and they had a horrific time. And no sooner after that was over, Arjuna does some remarkable things. They take risks. That's a case study in itself. So what he asked Sarath and uh, Kalu to do, first ball itself, hit it over, hit it over. The world had never seen anything like this. No other country had the answer to that, right? Now if you look at it, every team does it. Now it's a now. By the way, that's another learning. Have you noticed? Earlier when they first did it, every other team's style was, first 30 overs, play it safe, last 15 or so, you open up. Wasn't that the style? And what was the average score in a, in a one day those days? 250 was considered a good score, no? correct? Today, even if you get 450, you are not guaranteed of winning. No? Uh, isn't it true? Same number of overs. What has changed? More than that, what has changed? Mindset has changed. Mindset has changed. From we cannot do this to no, we can. It's all about mindset. Mindset has changed. Mindset has changed, right? Sri Lanka mindset seems to have gone on other way, right? But mindset has changed. Mindset, first. Do we have a winning attitude? See, after World War II, when Japan was flat, and that is why they still have a lot of respect for Jaya Jayawadana, because he got up at the UN and he was the only person who spoke for Japan, when everyone else was trying to, you know, bury them even more. That is why. All right? When Japan was flat and the whole world said they were flat, only one country disagreed. Who was that? Japan! <laughs> Japan said, no, you're wrong! And what happened? That was the birth of the Toyotas, the Suzukis, the Hondas, the Sonys. What's the difference in Sri Lanka? Now, if somebody comes from overseas, your relatives, I'm sure they come and say, what are you doing here? You should also migrate, run, Atta Ivarai, Inna, Pitekka, and all that, right? And what do we say? Yes, you're right, Atta Ivarai. No, but it's sad. Where is the Sri Lankan mindset? Why can't we think like the Japanese? Now, the whole world is saying Sri Lanka is over, and Sri Lanka is also saying Sri Lanka is over. Are you seeing the difference? Can we make a change here? See, I always say this, wherever I get a chance, thinking, let's say these eight people start to think the way I do, at least on this point. There are people that you influence. Each of you will go and influence another eight people. Those eight people will influence another eight people. And slowly we have started a movement of positivity, of change. Just making, making sure we win at the end of the day. As Sri Lankans, we win, we succeed. What do you guys think? Shall we do it together? Can that be something we do? We take this mindset, someone who from Sam Samantude, from Jaffna, from all the place, we take it to all corners of this island and start doing this? Am I just talking nonsense here? Or is this something we can try to do, really? Start from the office, absolutely. And so coming back to this. Affiliative is all about people come first. So during COVID time, the companies that still got productivity from people started using a lot of affiliative style. Because people are worried, am I going to die? What's going to happen to my family? At that time, you, don't, you can't say, you don't, I don't care about your family. What? Do your work. Is it? Then I don't care about you also, right? So affiliative style is showing people come first. Especially when there is a lot of stress in the team, people are worried. So this is a good time to actually develop this affiliative style. You need to reassure people. You need to give them confidence, give them comfort, show them, yes, we can come out of this. Yes, I am with you. Yes, I will help you. Yes, we can. So Obama's uh, 
uh, some boys were talking about Obama. Obama's first camp campaign slogan was, yes, we can. And that resonated with so many people, right? Millions of people. Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Democratic is, what do you think? Democratic. By the way, if you want to get input from your team, now this is another learning. Let's say you are the leader, you are talking to your team, and there is a challenge, and you want to find a solution. If you want to get ideas, never give your idea first. <laughs> never give your solution first. If you do, you will not get many other solutions from your team. Because let's say I have told you something and I'm your boss, and you know for sure Sanjeev is wrong here, most of the people will not stand up and say that. Why? Because you're the boss. <laughs> and they don't want to upset you. Plus your ego also. If somebody says, Pubudu, I'm married. Then Pubudu has boss say, Oh, I'm married. Which is a you know, little bit uncomfortable, right? So what does Pubudu do as he's clever? He says, tell me, what would you do? Now they'll ask you. So boss, what, would, what are you saying? What would you do? Say, no, I have some ideas. But Mama Kian is still okay, Mama Kian. What do you say? What should you do? What can we do? Get the ideas. Now, even if they disagree with you, they will say the idea because they don't know what you're thinking. And even if the idea you had is now wrong, you don't have to say that. Because you listen to the other and say, Ah, yes, I was thinking what Venera was thinking. I, I, I was not, but I was thinking, yeah. So, Democrat, case setting is a, is a dangerous style to use. Unless everyone in your team is as clever and as dynamic and as energetic and as driven as you. Now, pace setting is where the leader is fantastic. So, leader do not at the pace, expecting the team to keep up with him. So, if I'm the leader and I'm going now fast, I'm going at my pace because I think that's a fantastic pace. You guys have to be back. Balnagota, Anita, Vatila, Marila along the way, right? We have a lot of dead bodies along the way. So that's a dangerous style to adopt unless everyone in the team is highly driven and super powerful. It's like, for example, as a take an example, if you take a company like Google, they could probably use pace setting in a lot of circumstances. Why? Because Google being Google is attracting some of the smartest minds in the world. So if everybody is equally clever, everybody is equally driven, we can all run at a tremendous pace. But if everybody is not, people will fall aside. This is a mistake I made many times in my life. Yeah, to my detriment actually. It, it affected me negatively. Because what happens is if I'm trying to run fast, the rest of the team gets demotivated, right? Hey, we cannot do this. We cannot catch up. We cannot, you know, we cannot. So we have to always think, who do we have in the team? What are their capacities? How fast can they run? Not that you have to stop running fast, but you have to be aware. What's happening with everyone else? Maybe there might be, let's say, if this is my team, there might be Shanae, who is who can run at my same space. So I give him higher targets and allow him to run faster because that's what he wants. But let's say there's Upul, who, you know, is not. So I give Upul something that would be a stretch target for Upul, which is 25% of Shanae's target. Because if I give Upul also Shanae's target, he won't even achieve the 25%, right? Because he gets so demotivated, he won't even do that. So it's pace setting, right? And coaching is, yeah, helping people along the way, coaching them. So let's do this now, let's do this. So those are the six styles. Let's say it's CEO or the GM or whoever the person is setting very aggressive targets for the company. All right? I'm sure all of us have targets like that. Okay, now, again, it comes to a ratio of if you have, for example, five people in the team who are equally good, all pace setters, with that five stars, you can achieve the target. When you don't have five stars, you might need 10 people to achieve the target. Out of those 10 people, you might have two stars. You might have other eight who are, you know, workhorses. You look at your companies, you look at your teams. Everybody in your team is not a star. No? Because if you have your <laughs> classic bell curve, if everyone is a star, the bell curve will be skewed like that. It's not, no, it's, it's a normal bell curve. It's a normal curve. Bell curve is a normal curve. So, you have only few stars. But still, we have aggressive targets. In that case, we need to put more resources into achieving those targets. If you don't put the resources and you still have the targets, you have burnout, which some companies have. There are Sri Lankan companies where burnout now is a recurring feature. Why? Aggressive target, people are not increased, so you can't do that. There is one of my uh, two years junior to me at uh, uni, yeah, joined as a director at one of these companies, software companies, worked like hard, 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 worked for about six years, got totally burnt out. For the next two years, he did nothing. He just went and sat on a beach or something. True story. Because he couldn't do anything else. He was like totally burnt out. Yeah. So you have to think, is that worth it? Is that what I want? 
There's another friend of mine, he won't mind me saying this because he said it openly. Lal Chandranath. How about Lal Chandranath? Lal Chandranath was uh, at his peak, he was the MD of DMS Electronics. Very senior guy in the IT industry. Recently, I saw at the National Best Quality Software Awards, he has been awarded the Lifetime uh, Award, right? So, good friend of mine, Lal Chandranath, and he's uh, also going to mentor me, which I'm very proud of. So, Lal told me, his last years of DMS, he was burnt out. He, he like almost collapsed, yeah? And the next two or three years after that, he couldn't function, he couldn't do anything. He had like driven himself and his team for so long that he was just like, did he say that in his speech? He's a lovely person. So that's the downside. We can't all run at a high pace for a long time. Let me give you a personal story. So one of my passions is choral conducting. I take great pride in it and we have done some great things over the, over the years. So in 2017, the Asian Choir Games was being held in Colombo for the first time. And we had countries, so many other countries coming to Sri Lanka with their choirs and great thing. Before that, we had gone abroad for competition. The first time it happened in here. I had three choirs participated. I was conducting Methodist College Choir, number one. I was conducting a young uh, female choir called Noted, number two, and I had the Revelations Academy Children's Choir, which was my performing arts school, which had a choir. Oh. So the last two weeks, each choir was practicing for four hours each day. What I didn't realize was, Although each choir was practicing for 4 hours each day, Sanjeev Jayaratnam was practicing for 12 hours each day. With this same energy I am giving you now. I forgot that I was also human. Alright. Competition came, first round finished. They did really well. Uh, Meto became the first, the best uh, youth choir in the Asia Pacific region. Uh, my uh, chamber choir, the female chamber choir became also the best in the Asia Pacific region in that category. And the children's choir got a gold. Now they were all promoted to the next round which is the Grand Prix round. Even high level. Very happy and all that. Day of the competition, I have 104 temperature. I am shivering. Why? I'm just exhausted, that's all. Immunity has just dropped, I'm like flat. Now that day I have to conduct three choirs. <laughs> all in the second round of the competition. I just didn't have the energy. Will was there, physically couldn't do it, right? So I had to make a choice. I decided my children's choir and Metho needed me more than the adult's choir. So I managed to conduct for those two. They actually won. They got through and they won. The adult's choir, they got a gold the first time round. This time they got a silver because somebody else had to step in and conduct. Why am I telling you this? We have to also realize we can't all run at a pace for a long time. If you don't look after yourself, something happens to you. Now who looks after your team? Something happens to you, who looks after your family? Are we working hard at what expense? When did we last do a health checkup? We have to look after ourselves as well. You are the leader, yes. But the leader, if the leader doesn't look after the leader, how can the leader look after the others? Think about it that way. Yeah, if the leader is like really worn down and really, you know, burnt out, how can you motivate others? You are also on edge. Your stress levels are high. How do you? So, as leaders, again, this is something I believe. If you are being told things that you believe is unreasonable, you need to push back. At whatever cost and say, no, we cannot. Leaders don't want yes men or women. They need to be sometimes told, we cannot do this. We can do this instead. It will work when it's a highly motivated team. Like if everyone is a high performer in that team, then you can all run at a high pace. What are examples of these teams? The teams which are in the Formula Formula 1 races, the team which has to change the tyres, how long does it take to change, to do everything? Two seconds or something, right? So that's a highly motivated, high performance team. High performance team. Yes, a team doing bypass surgery. There is no room for error, right? There is no room for error in that whole team. Somebody messes up, patient dies. Leader is also high performing, whole team is high performing. Yeah. Situational. As I started off saying, coercive is the worst, strongly negative. That doesn't mean that you never have to be coercive. Sometimes you have to have that coercive style. Because if you only have democratic and affiliative, people will start jumping on your shoulder. That's not going to work either. 
Right? We have to have a balance. We need to have a balance. Just make sure it's everything is not equal percentage. It's finally your choice. You know your team. You know your people. You know what you need to do to get the best from them. What are the styles you need to have? And you need to adapt as well. It's not one style forever. It's not one style forever. You need to have these all six styles in your toolbox and then know which tool to take for which situation and when to apply. The learning here is see what styles you are predominantly using. There may be some styles you're not using at all. And then try to see in future, how do you balance this? What styles do you want? See, what, what generally happens is we go on autopilot. No, we do a lot of things automatically without knowing. Sometimes we might be extremely aggressive in everything. Yeah, without really knowing that we are. But now that you realize, yes, there are six different styles, you can think, okay, which style is, has been my normal trademark? Should I reduce that a little bit? In different circumstances, should I use more coaching? Should I use, be more democratic certain circumstances when I have to get more buy-in or, you know, ownership? from the team if i ask them what do you think can get their input would there be more ownership yeah for sure so can i change this how many of you figured out what styles you are currently using you've, you've learned. learned what styles you're currently using what styles you want to use and how much yeah is there a change is there a difference <laughs>